Good evening, I'm Zansi. Welcome to Training SA right here on SABC3. It's your midweek installment. That means we are halfway through this one and we'll continue to escape the norm with some exciting trends and topics. I'm Alma and with me is the queen of morning radio and primetime TV, Rufilwe, and then... Yeah! Okay. Come through with the... We saw Hi the those. photos on Twitter. What are your people in Umlazi doing at the in beach? In KZN. In KZN, everyone is at the beach now. Guys, I, I made an address yesterday. Yes. And clearly, they're no longer listening to me. Mm -hmm. They're no longer listening to the president. Mm -hmm. But I'm being an adult. I'm working for the first time in my life. I am at work on the 16th of December. 2020. This, this is what comes with being a lame dad. <laughs> but Mable, we're not doing this for free, remember? No, uh, I'm, I'm volunteering on this okay. day. Oh, yeah. Okay, shame. He hasn't heard that we get paid. But anyway, <laughs> uh, let's get into the top trends. <laughs> It's a reconciliation day, a public holiday for many in the country. If you work in retail, we feel you, don't worry. Now, this day speaks to unity and to a coming together of the nation. The president's reconciliation address went virtual because it's 2020. Um, and something about this day made me think of all the infamous people that sometimes, you know, they don't reconcile us as much as they do the opposite. So, who would be the most <laughs> unlikely candidate? <laughs> ever so to address all of us about reconciliation. Go, oh, Mable. And that uh, Frederick Willem Dicklick. Frederick. Yeah. Um Frederick. Yeah, Um Frederick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how to say it. Yeah. Not about I just don't think that yeah, he's not, the, I don't think it's the one. But I thought... I thought Black Twitter dealt with him at yeah. the year. And I, I solidly thought you'd go for Steve Hofmeier. Straight to uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Um Stevie. Yeah, no. Do you know there's a, there's a new Steve... That I don't know if many new people Steve have on the block. I had a new Steve hits. on the block. I don't know if anyone knows who Chris Chameleon is, but Used he's to love doing his music, some yeah? distinctly Steve-like things on Twitter these Ooh, days. Really? Really? Yours? Okay, this is very simple. This is my home girl Helen Zilla, because oh. we know that the last time we had it was we're having a good time, the Gumi Nandi, and then Helen was like, "Oh, guns blazing, pew pew pew." So <laughs> we're not out here for like good times and reconciliation, <laughs> babes. Let's talk in the new year. You know how much you love me. <laughs> Don't be like this. <laughs> okay, let's see if, uh, if you have some better ideas. We asked you who you think would be an unlikely candidate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Uh, we didn't get your uh, posts in, but thank you so much to everyone who joined the conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, we have been watching this for a number of years now. The Office of the Public Protector suffering a string of embarrassing court dismissals, losses, and sometimes accusations of improper findings. Um, and this is all brought, uh, that, that's all brought into question. Uh, advocate Musisium Kwebani's fitness to hold office. To add to her woes, this uh, reports have come out that the director of public prosecutions has taken a decision to prosecute advocate Mkwebane following assessment of evidence collected by the Hawks. It is quite a complicated matter. Yeah, yeah the issue of the public protector has now pitted all of us, uh, legal eagles, everybody is in on this conversation. Um, uh, Daniel Black went straight in says even if Parliament failed to remove her, the sight of her in the dock will be the highlight of her entire career. Liar, biased, incompetent. Okay, okay, Daniel. Sure. Wow, Daniel. Lerato Tsebe says chapter nine institutions are in danger. We're in clear and present danger. Well, Daniel must actually tell us how he really feels. Mm. So to help us understand the DPP's decision to charge the public prote uh, protector is the director and head of projects at Accountability Now, Paul Hoffman. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thank you for having me and for the opportunity to pick over the bones mm. of this uh, <laughs> trending topic. So, uh, Paul, we understand that the DPP has taken the decision to pro uh, prosecute adv Advocate Mkweban. Now, I heard things like perjury. Um, can you help us unpack what does perjury mean? Perjury occurs when a person lies on oath. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing to tell a lie. That makes you dishonest. It makes you mendacious. But when you put your hand up and say, so help me God, mm -hmm. after you've just written down a lie, then you are committing perjury. And it is a serious offense 
because courts are entitled to assume mm. that mm. people who put affidavits on record in courts are telling the truth. Mm. Otherwise, sure. the administration of justice becomes exceedingly complicated and you have to, instead of accepting the affidavit on the face of it, you have to have trials and credibility findings and a lot more uh, time-consuming and expensive court work. So when an official such as the public protector, which is a very high office in our constitutional setup, mm. chooses to tell lies on oath and to place them before the highest court in the land and to be caught out by the highest court in the land, she ought, if she has any decency in her, to put her tail between her legs resign and disappear into the longest grass that she can find. Wow. Okay. Instead of which, this has not happened. Yeah. So you guys have written to the president to ask him accountability now, uh, has written to the president to ask him to suspend her. Um, why, is the, why is this worthy of a suspension? What is it about the Office of the Public Protector that makes the fact that her word seems to now not be worth much based on the evidence? Why is that so crucial to what that job requires? You see, the, the job of the Public Protector is to look into complaints of maladministration, investigate them, produce a report, and to make appropriate remedial action findings. Now, appropriate remedial action is about as wide as it's high. As long as it's appropriate and is not set aside on review, which happens far too often lately, as long as the remedial action is appropriate, those persons who are told to carry out the remedial action are obliged to do so. Sure. So it, it's, it's very clear that the integrity of the process, which gets to the point where remedial action is ordered by the public protector, is vital to the proper administration of justice in that office. Mm -hmm. So you don't want a public protector veering off into strange directions, as happened in the case in question, telling a parliament to please just change the mandate of the Reserve Bank. Mm -hmm. That cost the country trillions of rands when everybody around the world said, uh-oh, South Africa is about to become a banana mm. republic. It didn't happen because the courts put it right. But if it had simply been up to uh, Advocate Mkwabani, we, we, we would have a completely different Reserve Bank to the mm. one that we have at the moment. Mm. Sure. Paul, thank you so much for laying it out so succinctly uh, and, and simply for us. Uh, really appreciate your time this evening on a public holiday. You definitely have uh, helped us out a lot. It's been a, it's been a complicated few years and trying to, you know, keep abreast of all the developments regarding the Public Protector's Office. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, we are going to go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with our trends right here on uh, Trending SA. You don't want to miss out. Hashtag Reconciliation Day 2020. I can only party here because, because yeah. I'm working Ma Mable, on the 16th. Do you know that we can all see your Instagram? You mustn't lie. <laughs> I never party. Mm. Anyway. Okay. So we were talking about Reconciliation Day 2020 a little earlier, and I tried to show you what everyone else was saying on the topic of who should probably never lead a Reconciliation Day address, like the president did earlier today. Um, thank you so much to Deirdre uh, for weighing in on this topic, saying definitely um, Minister Nkosazana at Lamini Zuma, she divided our nation. We don't want to hear from a her. Smokers on will Day. never. Definitely a smoker. Yeah, smokers one. will never. Never get over it. When people zoom. <laughs> eh? Okay. And then Maredi Arthur Ashley um, decided to drag 
Julius Malema. Julius. L L I S. Julius. L I S. I don't want to say anything. I like my timeline. You like your timeline? Yeah, I like you don't want people in red to come yeah. for you with pitchforks no. out in the street. All right, guys, so this next story popped up on my timeline after an audio recording of Hollywood actor Mr. Tom Cruise started circulating on Mm. on social media. In the recording, the award-winning actor can be heard erupting Mm. in frustration at the crew members on set of Mission Impossible 38. Uh, Why are we still recording Mission Mission Impossible 7? Uh, Guys, for breaking COVID guidelines, just take a listen to this. (laughs) I don't ever want to see it again. Ever! And if you don't do it, you're fired. And I see you do it again, you're f-ing gone. And anyone on this crew does it. That's it. And you too. And you too. And you. Don't you ever f-ing do it again. That's it. Yes. Yo, guys. He seems pretty calm. <laughs> he seems pretty calm. <laughs> okay. So many people on Twitterville lauded the actor for being stern in cautioning the crew members about breaking COVID cautioning. Mm, no, wow, no, 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 that's he, cautioning. No, he was very calm. Okay. It, 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 it's not like he was jumping on the okay. couch or something. All right. So me, James Brown said mm-hmm. he's obviously asked them before to practice safety, and they continue to put families and jobs at risk. These are serious times, and grown people shouldn't be asked multiple times to practice safety. This was not just fluffing your lines. Mm. And then Jason Jordan says this he seems to be talking to about two or three people whom he could have easily pulled aside and spoken to them privately any other situation and a boss or coach screaming on their employees like that would have been lambasted for abuse or power i guess the, the real question then is becomes should we be calling each other out when people don't uh, adhere to COVID regulations. I know where you And are. how should it work? I know how, where you are on this because you're calling out the security guard <laughs> at our gate every I day. I call everybody out, left, right and center, ma'am, behind me in the supermarket, mm. please social distance. I don't want don't, you to You know that I know so many people who work in industries who have not worked for months. Yeah. Mm. And so I identify with his rage mm-hmm. because if you have close people that you know have battled through such a rough time this year, and their lives just start getting back on track. They're busy shooting a movie and one person jeopardizes it for For such a big team. And I'm just triggered because somebody touched my trolley at the shops and then told me when I told, when I called them out and said that if I'm so scared of COVID, I shouldn't be at the shop. Oh, wow. And um, I practiced something that I didn't know I had in me. I didn't know my own strength. I walked away. <laughs> Look at you. I think, I think yeah, you did call, <laughs> and, and then call me about. and, and yeah. we, we talked through it. I didn't I know my own strength. I think the point at this stage of this whole COVID drama is do not feel touched on your studio. If someone addresses you about upholding COVID protocols, it's not personal. We just don't want to die. Thank you. We're just trying to make it through a yeah. uh, global pandemic. And speaking of making it through things, <laughs> you got a Peter, the provincial ANC has reinstated the former Etiguini mayor Zandi Lukumete as a member, uh, or rather, she's they've allowed her to resume her legislative duties um, and uh, uh, ANC duties as well, despite the fact that she's out in bail on charges related to money laundering, corruption, and fraud amounting to 430 million rand. And then, on the other hand, here in Gauteng, the uh, ANC's Integrity Committee made a very, very different ruling about Nas- uh, Secretary, uh, sorry, Secretary General Ace Mahashule, who's also facing 21 charges of his own uh, of fraud and corruption amounting to 255 million rand. So the um, integrity committee has recommended that he step down with immediate effect. Uh, we'll see what happens to that decision. So, as soon as this news broke, Zandile Gumede obviously started trending. Farida van der Kaap says no action will be taken by the NEC. Uh, even if they are eventually found guilty, they'll appeal and continue in their positions under cover of the ANC's guilty until, well, innocent until proven guilty. Mm-hmm. Joining us now is political and social commentator Lucanio Vanka. Welcome to the show. Good evening, guys. Thank you for having me. Look, Anya, what now? What? <laughs> what? What? What is going on here? What do you make of it? 
Well, there's, there's a lot of clashes and this is partly due to the complexity of the decision that was made, that was made by the ANC at its conference. And the reason for that is because they made a political decision, but it has serious legal consequences. Um, so those clashes um, lead to this confusion that we have now. This is not only the second one, it's actually the third decision now, because remember Denim Caesar um, and Frolens Ratulana in Limpombo, similar thing happened and they were brought back. Then the ANC Integrity Committee makes a decision that the SG must step aside. But within this very same day, the PEC of uh, KZN makes a decision mm -hmm. that Zandi Nekumedo must actually come back. So these clashes um, speaks to the complexity of the issue. To simplify this issue very um, succinctly, they must appeal to the ethics of uh, the comrades and the, also the discipline of their comrades with ANC. The decision was made, it was a political decision. They participated in making this decision in Nasrik. They mm. therefore must abide by this decision and the ANC must demand that of them. So let, let's pretend we live in a world without ethics. The reason for stepping aside is fundamentally based on the fact that service delivery depends on um, having untainted uh, and uncomplicated um, people in government, right? Surely. Beyond ethics and morality. Yes, I, I, definitely. Um, there's the fact that it also serves a utility value, this decision that they made, that the incumbent is not fighting for their political life at the same time fighting to service the lives of their citizens mm. and the residents of Etekwini. So definitely there is uh, that, that, that utility value that comes in here. And it's also one of the reasons that the ANC must then also uh, appeal to the revolutionary consciousness of their comrades to say, you participated in this decision. I mean, this is definitely yeah. not the time to question the decision now after it's been made and Absolutely. adopted. If people wanted legal uh, opinions, they should have done before done that before Nasrik. Now well, the decision uh, is here, it stands. Thank you so much for your time this evening. We always appreciate a chat with you and your insights as well. Stay with us. We are going on a quick break and see you in a little, in a little bit. The conversation continues. It is Zah on SABC3. One of the areas most affected by the second wave of the, of the coronavirus pandemic. The local government has taken measures to curb the spread of the virus. Um, but the superheroes we are honoring next, the gift of the givers, came together with the Makanda municipality to help, particularly with hospital facilities. Something very needed at this point. Right. So the gift of the givers rehabilitated an isolation wing at the Settlers Hospital in Makanda, Eastern Cape, with the high care facilities amounting to 750,000 rands, with high care equipment that included 20 beds and oxygen points. All of this was organized in just five days. Woo! Five. Five days. Mm. People took to Twitter to upload the gift of the givers. Uh, Graham had this to say, I don't think we praise gift of the givers enough or truly contemplate the level of work they put in where the government simply fails. These guys renovated an old Makanda hospital ward in one week to offer 20 beds with COVID-19 high care and oxygen all at 750k where do we vote yes. this is what thomas had to say he said gift of the givers really deserve more rec mm. recognition not that they seek it for the excellent work that they do and i agree so of course we are just here as training essay to give props where props is due mm. and uh, joining us online now is dr mj suleiman founder of gift of the givers to tell us more about the work they've been doing around the country since the outbreak of this COVID 19 pandemic welcome to the show dr suleiman thank you so much for your time Thanks a lot. Thank you very much for inviting me on your program. You managed to refurbish a wing at Settlers Hospital in just five days. Tell us about the work that went into that project and how you got people to assist. Well, we've got our own building teams. We've got experience because in June, the end of June, we refurbished the Mitchell's Plain, the Lenter Hero Wing in Mitchell's Plain. And this was a whole hospital ward. Mm -hmm. And it took basically uh, uh, 30 days to, to renovate an entire hospital wing. Wow. Mm. That same building team 
we sent into Makanda and we said, look, this is urgent. We were there last week. Mm. We walked around with the, with the, super, uh, the SEO or the hospital. Sure. We found those two wards and they were closed. Mm -hmm. And they said, why are these wards closed when you're telling me your casualty is full of patients? You're showing the patients lying there. They said, this ward belonged to a private hospital. They left and we, after they left, Nobody else could uh, deal with the, the, we couldn't fix it up. Mm. So I said, if we fix it up, will that be okay for you? You know, and the amazing part, all credit goes to the CEO. You know, normally with red tape, it takes months to get the signature. Sure. In two minutes, she said, go ahead and do it. Wow. 48 mm. hours later, our wallet team was there. They started on Saturday, the following Thursday, they were finished. Oh. And we went in on Tuesday and they were in absolute awe. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. So. Um, Dr. Suleiman, we love this project, but we also just love how effective you guys are at what you do. We just have about two minutes left. What is the secret to how effective you are and how can we get that effectivity to start infecting everything else we do here in South Africa? Oh, well, credit goes to my team members. You know, we've got a team that are passionate. It's not about money. It's mm -hmm. not about days and nights. It's not about Christmas mm -hmm. and long weekends. They work Monday to Sunday. And they go beyond the call of duty because they are, they are passionate about serving people. They, they're passionate about love, of compassion, and helping people in difficulty. So it's all about our, the, the community of the people that we have committed. And also we've got 30 years of experience. Mm -hmm. You know, we've done this all the time. We've been in war zones, we've been in earthquakes, we've been all over the world, we've been busy with the drought. We're doing a lot of things in Eastern Cape and in the country. Yeah. So it's about passionate people, it's about being efficient, quick decision making. And we, we had a plan drawn out already in March. And we're just basically follow, following that plan since March up till now. Beautiful. Wow. Mm. Beautiful. Doc, thank you so much. And it's trending to say we, we love the work that you, you guys are doing. We thank you. Keep on, keep keeping on. Thank you very much. All no, right. Wow. All right. It seems like trouble is brewing at the Kimia resident. Afford was reported that the Hollywood's unlikely power couple is living separately and are focusing on their personal project and coming together for the kids. Mm. And as a self-proclaimed connoisseur of messy affairs, <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you for free that there's trouble in paradise. Guys, what do you guys think of what's going on? You know what, guys? I mean, we, we've we've all we've seen the speculation. We've mm. saw Kim's um, uh, we saw Kim's update or message mm. about Kanye's mental health issues. We don't know quite what it is, but all I can say is I can understand how families supporting mm. people mm. that are dealing with mental illness how mm. fatigued they get, so, right? Mm. And it's just a lot, a lot, a lot to do mm. with someone who falls off the wagon, gets back on the wagon. Mm. I mean, they obviously, I'm sure they're tired of it, mm. but to be on the receiving end and supporting them. Is mm. Yes, I totally get the fatigue that mental illness wrought, not only on the person who suffers, but also their immediate loved mm. ones. But I feel like even through the wire, Kanye, yeah. back mm. in the day, mm -hmm. Kanye, was a lot. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if he's marriage mm. material. Yeah. I feel and, like they're both a lot though. So maybe that's what made them perfect initially. And people on Twitter actually do agree yeah. with you guys because yeah. O'Brien Benedict says that it's too much stress handling mania and he can't seem to regulate. Mm. Also concerned with his obsession with religion, not a good sign. It goes hand in hand with psychosis and I repeat obsession. But if, guys, I understand mm. with mental illness what people are going through. Mina, I always go to that. We're also going to check out what's been making the rounds on the movie circuit, so you don't want to miss out. Good night, South Africa. Nighty! <laughs>